Hello, everybody. I am Maggie Christian McGriggs, and I am here again on The Lady Walker Show. I'm so excited to be here today. Want to talk to you about a few things. Want to talk to you about following your dream. How about that? I am one who I'm still trying to figure out. I've got some things in my heart, some desires in my heart, but just trying to figure out how to do those things. And that is one reason I'm so thankful and so grateful to the great Lady Walker. She always allows me an opportunity to be on her platform. Now, you know, when somebody gives you some of their space, that means they believe in you. So I'm so glad that Lady Walker believes in me. Uh, I came up with this topic. I don't know how I came up with this topic. I was just tossing some things around in my head, in my mind. You know how we do and saying, what in the world can I share with the people today? And that's when uh, in that my thinking and in tossing things around, I thought about I'm still, and I say that because I'm over 60 years old, but I am still chasing my dream, trying to figure things out. Some things that have helped me, well, you know what, I got to get these glasses. Don't let me forget about that. Had to have some help when you get over 60. That makes everything a little bit better. Now, don't laugh at me because you just keep on living. You might have to have some glasses one day, too. But that's all a part of maturing. So that's what's happened to me. I recently retired, and I am having a fabulous time of retirement but I'm still obligated because of God's plans and purposes for my life to pursue my dreams. So can't give up. Just because you retire from work doesn't mean you retire from life. I think I talked about that last time I was on the show. Um, and on my cake, my retirement cake, I had this slogan right here. It said, goodbye tension, hello pension, the best is yet to come. So I had worked, 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 worked for years and years. So I had some legs to stand on in retirement. And so I'm just enjoying. I hope that there are others of you out there who are doing the same. I know some who are pursuing retirement. They're getting ready to retire. And I just want to let you know it's going to be great. Well, it's going to be whatever you make it. How about that? But anyway, I came up with a topic today. I've only just begun. Remember what my cake said? The best is yet to come. I believe that because deep inside of each and every one of us, when we are created in our mother's wombs, God places desires within us. Now we got to go through uh, the journey of life. We have to go through different stages in life, might not just walk right directly into our dream. I haven't. But anyway, God does not change his mind about you. He hasn't changed his mind about me either. I'm so, so glad. Anyway, like I said, deep inside of us, God has placed desires and he's placed gifts within us, talents and dreams. I haven't figured out yet what my talents are. I don't like to cook. I don't like to sew. Um, I don't know. I just enjoy reading. And of course, y'all know from me being on the show, I enjoy talking. So maybe that's my gift, huh? I know at the uh, place where I used to work, they call me the voice. So there you have it. That's one of my gifts to expound on things, to talk, talk, talk. That's the way my husband puts it anyway. Uh, we know what we want to do because we have these dreams and desires. We think about things, but... And there's always a but, huh? But at times we experience delays or we get sidetracked by life. I remember when I was a little girl and my mom and dad for Christmas one year, they bought me a doll. It was a pretty doll. It was tall. She would stand up and she would talk. And the name of this doll was Susie Smart. I don't know if any of y'all from back in the day remember Susie Smart. But anyway, she had a little desk that came with her and she had a chalkboard. And so I used to play with Susie Smart. And I would always imagine, I know she was probably supposed to be the teacher, but I always acted like I was the teacher. And so I grew up believing that I was supposed to be a teacher. How about that? You know how children, they toss those ideas around. You hear them say, when I grow up, 
I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to be a policeman. I'm going to be a fireman. I'm going to be an actress. I'm going to be a basketball star. I'm going to play football. You know, the list could go on and on and on. Or else some people might say, some children might say, I don't like Mississippi. When I grow up, I'm going to move to Texas. I'm going to move to Chicago. I'm going to move to Ohio. I'm going to move to Hawaii. You know, we have these dreams within us as children. And then some people will say, well, I won't linger there too much because that list could go on and on and on. There are so many professions in life that our boys and girls have to choose from. So, you know, that's what I was doing. I said, when I grow up, I'm going to be a teacher. And then, and guess what? Life happens. How about that? So, I was in school, and I did really good in school. And once I got in high school, I was really encouraged by some teachers, one in particular, my business education teacher, Mr. Ducksworth. Now, Mr. Ducksworth always encouraged me that I could do just like he was doing. I could teach boys and girls typing, shorthand. That was what was going on back in my day. We didn't have too many computers or things like that. So I just got it in my head. I told y'all, toss things around in my head that I was going to be a business education teacher. And after I finished high school, I pursued just that. I enrolled at Jackson State University. Yay, Jackson State. <laughs> and I went to school there for, well, actually, I didn't enroll in Jackson State right away. I went to Hines Community College. Let me give them a shout out to very, very good college, community college. And I enjoyed that small town atmosphere at the community college because I lived in a small town. I wasn't used to a big city. So Heinz worked for me. And then after I finished my two years there, then I enrolled at Jackson State University. And in my last year, as I was pursuing a degree in business education, I had to do observation at a school. And I was sent to Provine School. Y'all know where it is. Well, even back in the 70s, the children were a little bit different in the city than they are in the country. So I wasn't used to that. Uh, the boys and girls, I won't say that they were bad, but, you know, they were just on a different level than we were. And I just couldn't handle teaching them, or so I thought. So guess what I did? I'm telling you, life happens. I went to my counselor and I said, you know, I don't think this is for me. My parents would be disappointed if I did not graduate, so what can I change my major to so that I can just finish college and go on into the work world? And my counselor advised me that I could change my major to business administration and I could go ahead and graduate on time and everything would be just fine. So that's what I did. I got my degree in business administration and I went out to work in corporate world. And so, uh, like I said, life happens. I began to work for one of the big telephone companies and it was a great career. So I thought, okay, I wasn't supposed to be a teacher after all. I'm supposed to be working right here, I'm telling you. It was a great job. And things were a little bit different then than they were, than they are now. Because when I actually went, um, I had talked to personnel at this phone company and was told to come downtown to the office to take my placement test and also for an interview. Well, me being a country girl, I'm telling y'all, <laughs> life does happen. So I went downtown, but I couldn't find the office. And guess what? I was a shy little country girl and I didn't ask anybody. And so I ended up going back home. And now I'm gonna have to finish this when we come back, we've got to take a break, but I sure am having a fantastic time with you. I'll see you in a few. All right, I'm back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Maggie Christian McGriggs here on the Lady Walker Show. And before we took a break, I was telling you about some of my life experience when I finished college and went to work in the corporate world after I decided maybe I wasn't supposed to be a teacher. So I uh, worked at this company for quite a long time. Actually, 
let me just throw this out there too, how God works in our lives because he's always taking us somewhere if we'll yield our lives to him and follow him. And so that's what was happening. So don't think it's strange if you take a side trip on your journey to your dream because that's exactly what has happened to many of us. Some people say, what can happen? Well, like I said, mine was work. I changed my major in college and I went into the corporate work world instead of into the educational work world or school system. But for others, it might just be marriage or not marriage. It could be having children or like I said, mine was work. So I went to take my placement test, pass with flying colors and then I remember the lady's name, Ms. Cheryl Bibb. She said, uh, okay, you are ready now to go on your interview. So I went on the interview and the guy that hired me, his name was Don Burgett. He used to live here in Mississippi, but he moved back to Alabama, which was home for him. But he was a great person to work for. And that interview was just so easy. This is the way God will make things for you. Cause I went and I sit before him and uh, he said, well, he told me about the department. It was the executive department and a lot of people wanted to know how in the world I passed by the operating room or working on the switchboard to go directly into the executive office. But that's God. See, he'll do things like that for you. And I'm not trying to say I'm his favorite because you are too. Just listen to God and follow your heart. Anyway, uh, I went to work in that office and during my years there, well, for one thing, I was the only black person in that office, and guess what? God was doing a work in me because I was the only black person in that office for 15 years. Imagine that. <laughs> so in that, um, you know, back in the 70s, even though um, I had, they had integrated schools, so we were able, we as black people were able to go to school with Caucasians and other nationalities, but there was still that, there was that tension in the air and people were thinking that because you're black, you're not supposed to be in this position, you're not supposed to be that. One guy that I worked for was a chauvinist at that time and he didn't believe that women should be working because his wife didn't ever have to work and he surely didn't believe that a black woman should be up in that place. But anyway, you know what? God was on my side because well, I can't tell all the story. <laughs> but anyway, before it was all over, that guy and I became friends because of the life that I lived, of the walk that I walked, because he said that not only did I profess to be a Christian, but I walked the walk. So, hey, that was saying something right there. And before he retired, he told me that he would be honored if I would call him my friend. And so that's the way that, that it, we had a rocky start, but it ended up really good. And God was doing something in me in that time because later on in life, you know, if I had gone on carrying hostility and different things in my heart about how things had turned out, uh, you know, my life might have been different. But God changed my heart and the way that I felt about a particular people. Uh, because he knew that he was going to bring us all together. So, you know, that integration of schools was just a small part of it. And even before that, we had so many of our forefathers and foremothers who had to walk, certain walks had to, uh, they had to sacrifice some of them, even their lives, so that we could get to the place where we are. So I am just thankful for that part of my journey. But anyway, like I said, life happened, so I ended up not being a teacher. And, and I worked there for a long, long time until God changed my heart about a lot of things, like I said, especially about a particular people. And then guess what? That company decided they were going to downsize. So here I go on another part of my journey. So anyway, the guy that I was working for at that time, uh, he asked me when, you know, it had been told to me that I was going to be laid off. He asked me what I was going to do. And this is what I said, just some words just came up out of my mouth and said, I said, I'm going to work for school system, but they just don't know it yet. And guess what? I was off for a while. And then one day, just taking my younger son to school, the principal asked me if I would work for him. So my wheels start turning again. You know, I'm telling you, we toss these things around in our heads. So I thought, okay, that's it. That's it. I'm supposed to be a teacher. 
So I went and I took a test. You know, you can uh, do a different route, an alternate route, and become a teacher. So I went and I took a uh, test that I had to take to see if I was even qualified. Went, took that test over at Mississippi College, passed that test, flying colors. The, they even told me that most people don't pass it the first time around, but I did because God is with me. Well, as I did that, I tried to connect with wonderful Jackson State University to get in a few courses that I would need to get my teaching degree. Guess what? Couldn't connect. So then I went back to my notes and I looked at some notes that I had written and because I used to always keep a journal and write down things that God would speak to me, speak in my spirit. Well, one of the things that he had spoken to me was that I was not to be a teacher in the secular world. So I was like, oh, okay, Father, that's what's going on then. I'm not supposed to be a teacher. However, I did take a job at the school and uh, God just moved me from one position to another. And like I said, they ended up calling me the voice of the school. God, through me, had such an impact on the children that it was just a blessing to be there. So I didn't actually go in the classroom to teach, but I'm sure that just being in those children's presence, they in mind, that I was teaching them some things about life. So, hey, part of that dream fulfilled. All right, and so that's why I tell you to follow your dreams. Don't ever give up on your dreams, and don't be discouraged when you take side trips because God, sometimes when we are going on side trips, he's trying to get us to the ultimate or to the very best. Hallelujah. So I like that. Um, sometimes we allow our dreams to fall to the background. I had to look at my notes a little bit because I've been way off my notes, but anyway, it's okay. If I can't finish it all this show, guess what? Lady Walker might let me do another one. How about that? Anyway, sometimes we let our dreams fall in the background. We get mature, like me, and then we wonder, what in the world happened? How did I get so off track? But I came with some good news for you today. Just know this, it's never too late to pursue your dream. It's never too late to live life to its fullness. And don't get discouraged because of your age. Don't look back if you tried and didn't make it. Just try, try again. All right, is that some good advice? I hope so. And I hope that you are not only hearing this with your ears, but that you receive it in your heart because it will truly make a difference in your life everyday life and the life to come. So try, try again. Remember that it is God who places the desires in our hearts and he places those dreams in us. And remember that dreams do not come with an expiration date. You know, so many stuff, so many things now have expiration dates. You can buy stuff at the grocery store that has an expiration date. You got to use it up at a certain time. You can get medication. It's got an expiration date. But I'm here to tell you that dreams do not come with an expiration date. Let me get that out. God does not change his mind. As long as you have breath in your body, then there's a possibility for your dream to come into reality. All right, got to take another break. Hey, I'm back, and I was talking about keeping your dreams alive. Don't let them die. You got to keep them alive. Just like you're still living, keep those dreams alive. So what? You take a different route to your dream. Don't think you won't get there. It just means that you're in a learning process. You're on a journey. You know, sometimes a journey can take a year. Sometimes it might take a few days, depending on where you're going. But this life journey, it a lifetime. All right. And then something else I want you to do. Remember that God is not surprised by unexpected circumstances in our lives. He sees and he knows everything. So what he encourages us to do is to stay focused, keep our eyes on him. Now I know that in this world that we live in, that's kind of hard. We got distractions on every hand. Oh my goodness. This pops up that happens and then you got to deal with this I know because sometimes now that I'm retired I wonder how in the world I had time to go to work because I'm still quite busy and I'm at home most of the time now 
but don't give up on your dream. Don't get worried because you got slowed down. Just don't be stagnant. Don't stop and stay in one place. Don't just give up and say, well, it wasn't meant to be because that is not the truth. Allow God to move you. Hallelujah. I love that. Allow God to move you towards your dream. Because some of these side trips that we take wasn't even ordained by God. Like I said, sometimes life just happens and we find ourselves. It happened to me with my salvation. I was going down two different lanes. My dad taught me all about the world. My mom taught me all about God and spirituality. And one day I came to a crossroad and then I had to look over my life and make a choice. Okay, am I going to keep down this road, the worldly way, or am I going to submit my life to God? And I chose to submit my life to God. And I'm telling you, it's been a wonderful life ever since. Now, don't think that the old woman does not come up because sometimes, like I said, we'll get distracted, get on the wrong road. But when you submit your life to God and commit your ways to him, he'll get you back on track and he'll remind you of those dreams and those callings. All right. And remember the dream that he placed in you is perfected just for you. All right. Guess what? I think it'll be better than you could ever imagine. And don't listen to the naysayers, those with no vision. I'm telling you, you need to stay away from those kind of people who speak negativity and be still and listen to God. All right. Remember the power of life is the power of life and death. That's right. Let me get it right. It's in the power of the tongue. So you ought to be speaking life and you ought to be around those people who speak life. As you journey toward your dream, you gain wisdom. Therefore, when you attain your dream, it will be sweeter and sweeter. And remember that even delays have a purpose. All right, I know a lot of people don't think about that, that those delays have a purpose. Delays do not mean denial. It just might mean that God feels like you're not quite ready for it yet. And so you don't just step over into it automatically. Sometimes you got to go through the process. So just be thankful for the process. And always Determining yourself that you're going to live a purposeful life. Live life with a purpose. And then you got to be patient and allow God to prepare you for the fulfillment of your dream. Uh, you remember Esther in the Bible? She had to go through a time of preparation before she met her Prince Charming. All right? Or before... <laughs> so... Do not deny that time of preparation. All right, be patient, be patient. And then once you your dream is fulfilled, you'll understand what God meant about life and life more abundantly. Oh, don't you love that? I do. I know that sometimes it might be tough to keep going. And when I have times like that, I like to go to scripture. And a scripture that really suits that is Psalm 119. In verse 165, let me read that for you. I wrote it somewhere here in my notes. It says, great peace have those who love your law and nothing causes them to stumble. So that, what does that mean? It means you got to keep on pushing. All right. So do not ever give up on your dreams. I know sometimes um, we get tired. Sometimes our minds don't want us to raise on sometimes our limbs, our bodies. Try to tell us that we don't have the strength to go on. But guess what? We just got to keep on pushing. Hallelujah. Oh, and then <laughs> the body will scream out in protest. And I'm here to tell you, sometimes my knees hurt. And I told y'all I had to get these glasses for some help with my eyesight. So, you know, but I'm going to keep on pressing because I know that God still has something wonderful for me. And um, not only just me, not only has this affected my life, but uh, even my husband. My husband had a desire to be a business owner. 
and yeah, life took some turns on him, or took him on some turns, shall I say it like that. But anyway, I can tell you that because he's been faithful to God, God is being faithful to him. And so now um, he is a business owner. There came a time when the company that he was working for, they decided that they were going to downsize and just came to him one day and said, um, we're going to downsize and we begin with you. Hmm. Isn't that something to have to swallow? What they say, a big pill to swallow, especially if you are the breadwinner in the family. You know, the man is the head of the household. So he came to me and he told me, but you know what? I was not discouraged a bit because I know that God is in control and God will take care of us. He will provide for us. So I actually got excited and this is what I told my husband. I said, you know, you've always wanted to be a business owner. So I think it's time for you to pursue that dream. Let's try that and see if it's going to work for you. And so right now he's owner of McGriggs Heating and Air Conditioning Service. And I just throw that out there. You all know the season's coming spring right around the corner and you might need some services on your air conditioner or you might need some electrical service or refrigeration service so if you do McGriggs heating and air conditioning service is the company that you want to call don't forget and I have um I've been coughing a little bit and a cough is trying to come up now but I'm not gonna let that deter me so I'm going to get this little piece of candy that I brought with me. So y'all bear with me. I'm going to pop this in. Mmm, it's delicious too. It's butterscotch. But anyway, um, a Griggs Heating and Air Conditioning Service. And let me give you a contact number for him. It's 601-519-7540. So if you want to, or if you need some service for air conditioning, heating, electrical, refrigeration that's the number that you need to call and you're probably if you don't get an answer you hear my friendly voice I hope it's friendly to you so anyway just leave your name and information and we will surely call you back and our slogan is quality service with a smile because he's like me he likes to laugh and carry on and have a good time too all right so we are still talking about pursuing our dreams now I know that it's about time for this show to come to a close, so I'm going to have to say goodbye again. Thank you to Lady Walker and to the PEG Network for allowing me an opportunity to be on this platform. I'll see you again soon, and we might just talk a little bit more about pursuing your dreams. All right. See you next time.